Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Today we are going to take a look inside of this amplifier that I found at the dump not all too long ago. And uh, this is really just going to be a quick look inside. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, I'll be making a full demonstration with uh, good lighting and uh, good speakers and good music within the next few days. I cannot promise anything. I uh, don't really have all too much time at the moment, but uh, I'll see what I can do. Anyway, um, thought I would give you a quick look inside before I put this all back together. This is the Philips model number FA561. Here we have a quick look at the front. And we have the inside of the unit and uh, as you can see we are having a transformer uh, the transformer does have a decent size it's actually over dimensioned for this amplifier because uh, with this tiny little heat sink uh, the transistors which probably could take advantage of uh, the power this transformer can deliver uh, they are just not able to do it this is thermally protected and that's a pretty darn good idea because uh, even at low volumes this heatsink is getting very hot and uh, as you can see they are using some integrated circuits as uh, as the drivers for these uh, for the output stage which is kind of interesting another interesting thing is that uh, these are not Philips uh, TDA type amplifier integrated circuits. No, these are actually made by NEC, which uh, was kind of a surprise because, of course, Philips is making their own integrated circuits, which are all starting with uh, TDA. Um, this is the main circuit board, and uh, there was really not much to it. And we have the input selector, which uh, just some standard switches, nothing special. There sits the tone control, which uh, I think is getting kind of dark. There you can see it. Cheap potentiometers. They didn't need any cleaning, surprisingly. There is the volume control. And uh, you can see there is the rectifier bridge. We have uh, two uh, 4700 microfarads capacitors. And uh, Looking at the back, which of course is upside down right now. See, not too many inputs there. As you can see, this amplifier was made in Japan. Now that's, that's a Phono preamplifier, just a little integrated circuit. So that's nothing special. Anyway, there is one thing that's kind of special about this amplifier, and uh, that's actually uh, part of the repairs that I did. Now there you can see the power cord, and uh, the original power cord was cut off. I really hate when people are doing that because it's it's just absolutely useless. I mean, if somebody wants to plug this in, uh, <laughs> he's going to splice in a new power cord and that's it. So you can just as well leave the old power cord on there. But uh, anyway, you can see I've replaced the power cord, and uh, that's a special thing. I have actually managed with a lot of patience and some good tools to uh, get this uh, this little uh, tension holding thingy right there to get that back into the housing without damaging it. Here's the other side, which uh, down there. And uh, until now, I've always uh, I've always used tools to rip that out, and then I just uh, put a power cord through and just uh, wound it around a couple of times in there so that you can't pull it out and that was it but uh, this one <laughs> that's definitely a much more professional job of uh, repairing that there is the power switch this does have a real power switch which I like little uh, capacitor right there to protect the switch I had to take that out when I wanted to replace the power cord because it's kind of kind of cramped in there but uh, yeah, that's basically it for the Philips model FA561 amplifier. So hope you've enjoyed this video and see you again soon.